A story in themselves. Chris Weston joins us from IG in Melbourne. Um, Chris, tell us how you're understanding the session so far, the first hour, particularly, um, you know, we were closed yesterday and we saw a huge reversal in sentiment um, midway through kind of the US session too. How do you read it all? Well, I mean, at one stage we, yesterday when the, uh, the Asian markets were, were flying, um, you know, US futures were shot out the gate, Euro and, and other asset risk assets as well were, were pushing up with, uh, with some quite you know, remarkable strength, to be honest, given that most of this Spanish bailout side of things was leaked like late Friday afternoon. We were a little bit surprised just how, how strong the likes of the euro was. But I mean, we were calling our market at one stage to open at 41.83, which would have been a, a massive open. And, and clearly, if you look at the, uh, the reversal we saw in the S&P futures last night, uh, the fact is, you know, S&P futures, when we opened this morning, were pretty much flat where we, from, from the cash close on Friday. So all, all the indications were that we were going to have a flat open. Now, since the unwind of our, the actual cash market, Market today, we've we've traded in about a 12-point range. There's no real impetus from over either the bulls or the bears to really push this market around. And I think your downside, you're looking at that 3,996-point level at the moment, which is the weekly uptrend that's been in place from March 09. And I think if we get a close below that at the back end of the week. If we still continue to see a sell-off, then you know things look a little bit uglier. But I think at the moment, there's no real impetus either way to push this market around. I mean, we we probably got this uh, positive news that from from China, uh, the weekend's drama was was good. I mean, we saw the the uh, the numbers coming. Out on, on both on Saturday, the fixed asset investment, the industrial production, the CPI, those kind of numbers, all generally, um, you know, worse than expected, but actually better than the whisper numbers that were going around the, uh, the trading floors. And on Sunday, we've got the trade balance numbers, which both import and exports blew the uh, expectations out of the market. But yesterday, we got the new yuan loans, which beat, beat expectations by some 13%. So we want to see what happens with China. If we get a good good great again in the uh, the Shanghai composite in some of the uh, the Hang Seng for example as well then perhaps we can push up into the back end of the day but you know it just seems pretty tight ranges just before I came on air we did about did about uh, 880 billion uh, million dollars worth of value should I say which is, is is pretty low to be honest it probably puts us on track for a four billion dollar day uh, so there's yeah I mean, we sort of sit and wait and see how this this all plays out because clearly uh, what we saw from Spain last night was big reversal in a lot of the asset classes and people just saying look they're throwing debt at debt and it doesn't change the structural issues that are going on in, 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 in Spain and still there's a lot of questions being asked about the bomb, especially in the bond market there. When you boil it all down, because there's lots of reasons given today as to why we saw markets reverse that earlier positive sentiment about the Spanish bailout, when you boil it down, what do you think this is really about? Well, it is. It's about, you know, the, the, the devil's in the detail, I think, in terms of the, the Spanish bailout. I mean, as I say, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very big positive that, that we've averted a, a collapse of the Spanish bank, banking system. But, uh, you know, again, it puts, it puts the impetus now onto the sovereign level because, you know, the, because of the way that this is feeding through the FOR, FORB, uh, it's the Spanish sovereign who ultimately has to sign off on the Memorandum of Understanding, mm. which, again, puts it onto, onto their shoulders. I mean, bondholders at the moment in Spain were already really concerned about the Spanish debt situation. They're already concerned about the unemployment levels uh, and the growth prospects as well. And, and it's really not, it's really no, no one, no one's really buying Spanish debt other than, Span than Spanish banks. So now you've got to work, you've got to contend with the, uh, you know, the subordinated issue if we go through the, uh, through the European stability mechanism. That's one thing. But also the Spanish government now will have to wear the extra 10% to their debt levels that the, uh, the banks are going to have to wear. So again, I mean, it's, it's very, you know, you're seeing a situation where their debt to GDP levels were yeah. at 68%. Now they're going to be at well, 78 percent it's even more of a burden on these uh, on these uh, secondary bondholders who we're already concerned about now you've been pushed down the pecking order we're hoping it's going to go through the EFSF I suppose then you, you sort of avert um, any kind of subordinated issues mm. uh, but then Finland are basically coming out and said that we want collateral which again highlights just the fact that you, you, Europe are just not unified in any shape or form so but it basically boils down to the fact that, that we've averted a, a, a collapse of the Spanish banking sector which is great but it just pushes the emphasis more on the software and it more, puts more emphasis on Spanish bondholders. And we know that they've got about 90 billion of uh, issuance to get away this year as well. So yields at six and a half percent, just not sustainable at these levels. Yeah, and when it seems that this the bailout is less onerous on Spain, and that we know we you know we've talked for for years about the conditions placed on bailouts for for Greece, for Ireland, for Portugal, um, they're going to probably be feeling a little ripped off right now, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I mean, the finance minister of, uh, of Spain have basically come and sort of talked about the advantageous uh, 
you know, the superior mm. conditions that they've got. I mean, they're trading now, the, the, the loans they're going to be getting, or they're calling it a splone or whatever now, you know, 300, <laughs> 350 basis points from where they are, you know, Spain can go to the capital markets and raise funding at the moment. So these are good numbers. You know, we've already seen Ireland coming out and said that they, they're they thinking about renegotiating the terms or asking for that. Greece have come out and said, you know, there's an article in the E. Caffarini talking about that Greece wants more favourable terms as well. So, yeah, I mean, rightly so. I mean, OK, fine, this is di going directly into the banks. It's not helping a sovereign like we saw with Portugal and, and Greece and Spain and uh, Greece and, and, uh, and Ireland. And I think that's the key differential that we're seeing here. Uh, and that's something that they're key to highlight at the moment. But ultimately, you know, there's, there's less conditioning on this. There's less austerity coming through. What we will see is the IMF, who are going to be looking very closely at the Spanish deficit situation because they missed their targets um, by some way this year. Uh, and there's big talk that they're going to miss them again with the IMF will be sitting there and the Spanish press is saying that they've sold out their soul to, to, to the IMF basically on this so there will be a lot more stringent um, you know review of their budget situation but the problem is is that you know the conditionality compared to Greece where the huge austerity measures coming through compared to Portugal and compared to Ireland show that this is a very favorable deal and there's a very good chance you'd be looking for uh, you know similar mm. sort of terms yeah it's interesting um I can see his uh, one analyst commenting I think it's standard chartered saying also when we turn our minds to the Greek election this weekend on Sunday the higher the risk of a Greek exit the more difficult it li it's likely to be for Spain and Italy to access funding markets um, potentially forcing recourse to a full-blown bailout which is kind of what you've been addressing but the question is yeah. how markets respond through the course of this week do, do you expect quite um, well skepticism towards the euro do you expect um, risk currencies to be out of favor how does this play out well, I mean, given the uh, what's hanging over our head, I mean, I think st I'd still be, you know, if I was a betting man, put a, a high probability that, that everything that's going to be, you know, worked out quite well on mm. Monday when we get the actual results. I think the pro bailout groups are, are, should do okay. I mean, Papademos, who's the ex prime minister of the company's uh, country, has been coming out on the wires really pushing out to Greek people and saying that you know you know the risks that are involved out here you know we know that 80 percent of you want to stay in the European Monetary Union but you just want slightly less onerous terms well if you want that you've got to you've got to vote for the uh, you know for the pro bailout parties you've got to vote vote for new democracy so he hopefully he's going to have an impact we're going to wake up on Monday we're going to get these dripping through and uh, you know everything will be okay and then we'll just have to see if they're they're keen to like you know, to, to go along with the current austerity measures that are in place what we're probably likely to see though is um, you know people looking to, to, to run flat positions into the weekend where they can I think you know because hopefully things will go okay as I addressed just then but you know the worst case scenario is that you know that, that things could be very very bad um, and we know that the, the world's just not quite ready for, for what could re yeah. really really blow out here and, and the run on banks and stuff we just don't know what's going to happen yeah. so I think people will run a flat book into that I think a lot of people who are short will probably look to cover some of those shorts going into the weekend that could be good for euro it could be good for Aussie given the positioning that's in the market at the moment but at the same time I think we get too much of a bounce and I think people use that to sell into I still think risk assets right now are a sell on rallies um, and I think people will be looking at those good levels to, to sell into at the moment you know euro one of the that, that the level we saw last night coming through um, you know the, the, the 106 24 levels you know the, probably the best levels looking to sell into at the moment Chris, Sorry, the 126 24 yep. level sorry 126 24 thank you very much Chris Weston from RG markets appreciate it thank you well, Blue Scope still expecting the cost of its ongoing restructure to be between 120 and